subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 22nd of November. Indian farmers hold mass rally, keep pressure on PM Modi despite climb down. International Monetary Fund to revive $6 billion Pakistan funding program. And Sri Lanka begins trials connected to 2019 Easter bombings case. And now for all the details. Indian farmers held a mass rally on Monday in a show of strength as they said their protest would continue despite Prime Minister Narendra Modi's surprise announcement to roll back three farm laws which they have opposed since last year. The agitating farmers have demanded the government to introduce a law that would guarantee minimum prices for all crops and also address their other issues. Flushed with victory after Prime Minister Narendra Modi caved into demands for agricultural reform laws to be repealed, Indian farmers held a mass rally on Monday to demand minimum support prices be extended to all produce, not just rice and wheat. Thousands gathered for the latest rally in Lucknow in India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state, where Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party will seek to hold on to power in state elections early next year. The Prime Minister's climb down has sparked celebrations, but farmer leaders have warned that their nearly one-year-long agitation would continue until the government promised to introduce a law that would guarantee minimum prices for all crops. MSP guarantee kanun bane. साढ़े सात सौ किसान शहीद हुए हैं, उनका ध्यान रखा जाए। जो पोल्यूशन वाला वो पॉलिसी है, उसपे काम करें, और जो दूध का एक पॉलिसी लेकर आ रहे हैं, उसके भी खिलाफ हम हैं। बीच कानून ये लेकर आना चाहते हैं, तो ये बहुत से सवाल हैं। इन पर सब पे बातचीत करना चाहते हैं। Currently, the government mainly buys rice and wheat at minimum support prices or guaranteed prices, but the safety net benefits barely 6% of India's millions of farmers. Farmers have also asked for the federal government to withdraw a draft electricity bill, which threatens to cut subsidized power for irrigation. They also want the government to drop penalties for air pollution due to burning their fields after harvesting to remove stock and chaff which has become a major concern amid worsening pollution in areas bordering the crop-growing northern states. Indian Air Force Ace Pilot Group Captain Abhinandan Varthaman was awarded Veer Chakra, the third highest wartime gallantry award on Monday by President Ramnath Kovind at an investitor ceremony in New Delhi. Abhinandan shot down an F-16 during a dogfight over the line of control a day after India carried out an airstrike on a JEM terrorist training camp in Pakistan's Balakot in 2019. Indian President Ramnath Kovind presented gallantry awards and distinguished service decorations in defense investiture ceremony at Rashtrapati Bhavan, the presidential palace in capital New Delhi on Monday. Group Captain Abhinandan Varthman, who shot down a Pakistani F-16 fighter jet during a dogfight over the line of control LOC in February 2019, a day after the Balakot airstrike, was awarded the Veer Chakra by the President. In the process, Abhinandan, who was wing commander, had to eject over the territory controlled by Pakistan as his MiG-21 was hit. He was then taken into custody by the Pakistan Army. Pakistan was forced to release him due to the extensive pressure exerted by the Indian side along with international intervention into the matter. Among other gallantry awards presented by President Kovind included a Kirti Chakra awarded posthumously to Separ Prakash Jadav for gallantry in a counter-insurgency operation in Jammu and Kashmir three years ago. His wife and mother received the award. Major Vibhuti Shankar Dhondial, who was killed in the 2019 Pulwama terrorist attack, was accorded the Shauri Chakra posthumously for his role in an operation where five terrorists were eliminated and 200 kg explosive material was recovered. 
The award was received by his wife, Lieutenant Nitika Kaul, and mother, Saroj Dhondial. Kirti Chakra and Shore Chakra are the country's second and third highest peacetime gallantry awards after Ashok Chakra. The gallantry awards are announced twice a year, first on the occasion of Republic Day and then on Independence Day. And moving on, the International Monetary Fund said on Monday it has reached a staff-level agreement with Pakistan that will help revive a stalled six billion U.S. dollars funding program for the South Asian country. This comes as Pakistan has been grappling with the historical currency devaluation, high inflation, and current account deficit. The International Monetary Fund or IMF said on Monday it has reached a staff-level agreement with Pakistan that will help revive a stalled $6 billion funding program for the South Asian country, which faces growing economic challenges. Pakistan's Finance Minister Shaukat Tareen had last week said the terms and conditions of the program had been made harder due to economic losses caused by COVID-19 shutdowns. He said Pakistan had to complete five reforms before the IMF revived the funding, including withdrawal of tax exemptions and increased energy tariffs. This comes as Pakistan has been grappling with a historical currency devaluation and a current account deficit and an all-time high inflation, which experts say is likely to worsen. Sir, this is a very difficult thing. I mean, it's a very difficult thing. How much money will go? I mean, the government should think about it. And it's necessary to prepare such a policy that the common person can get some benefit from it. Otherwise, it will be a big issue. There will be no good news that the government is getting so much money. Before coming to power, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan strongly opposed IMF loans for their strict conditions. His government negotiating a $6 billion bailout package in 2019 to stave off the balance of payments crisis was a major U-turn in his position. And more news from Pakistan. Opposition Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has slammed Prime Minister Imran Khan over its incompetency amid an ongoing gas crisis in the country. Bilawal said the solution of all problems of all the public lies in the ouster of the ruling PTI-led government. Expressing serious concerns over the ongoing gas crisis across Pakistan, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, chairman of Pakistan People's Party or PPP on Sunday, slammed Prime Minister Imran Khan's government for its incompetency, saying that the solution of all problems of the public lies in the ouster of the ruling PTI-led government. Bhutto in a statement said on the one hand Imran Khan's puppet regime has doubled the gas prices and on the other hand gas has been made inaccessible to the consumers. Pakistan Prime Minister should apologize to the citizens who are starving due to the policies of the PTI-led government, he said. Due to diminishing local gas sources and the failure of the government to obtain a sufficient quantity of liquefied natural gas, Pakistan is facing a severe gas crisis. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Petroleum Dealers Association has announced a countrywide strike from November 25 to demand a 6% increase in margins on the sale of petroleum products. This comes as the government hiked petrol prices for the third consecutive time in two months, taking it to nearly 145 rupees per litre, leaving consumers overburdened. And in news from Sri Lanka, a Sri Lankan court on Monday began the first of three trials connected to bombings that killed nearly 270 people on the island in 2019 amidst appeals for greater accountability from victim support groups. The blast, claimed by militant group Islamic State, targeted three churches and three luxury hotels, shocking the country and shattering a decade of relative peace after the end of a 25-year civil war. A Sri Lankan court on Monday began the first of three trials connected to bombings that killed nearly 270 people on the island in 2019 amidst appeals for greater accountability from victim support groups. Nine suicide bombers belonging to local Islamist extremist group National Tawhid Jamaat linked to militant group Islamic State carried out a series of blasts that tore through three churches and as many luxury hotels in Sri Lanka. St. Sebastian Church in Negombo and St. Anthony's Shrine in Colombo were two of the churches targeted, 
while the Cinnamon Grand Hotel and the Shangri-La Hotel were also badly hit in the attacks. Nearly all victims were Sri Lankans who had gathered to celebrate Easter Sunday at churches. Dozens of foreigners were also killed. Sri Lanka declared a state of emergency and deployed the armed forces after the blast as fears of retaliatory sectarian violence caused Muslim communities to flee their homes amid bomb scares, lockdowns and security sweeps. Moving on to news from Nepal, Vice Chairman of Opposition Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist-Leninist or CPNUML, Bhim Rawal has announced his candidacy for the post of Chairman challenging incumbent K.P. Sharma Oli in the upcoming General Convention. UML is holding its 10th General Convention from November 26th to 28th to elect new leadership for the next five years. After the split of Madhav Kumar Nepal faction from the CPN UML and Oli's denial to implement a 10-point agreement for party's unity in July, Rawal was dissatisfied with the current chair. The move to announce candidacy is being considered as a challenge to the faction led by KP Sharma Oli. Oli, a former prime minister, has always been vocal against opponents, whether they are from inside the party or ruling alliance. He is, however, yet to comment on Rawal's candidacy. The mesmerizing autumn season is at its peak in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. Tourists from across the country are flocking to the Mughal Gardens to witness its beauty and picturesque atmosphere created by the autumn leaves of Chinar trees. Large number of domestic tourists throng Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory this weekend to enjoy the autumn chill and catch a glimpse of the fiery chinar or oriental plant trees as the temperatures dropped below normal. The leaves of chinar are scattered beautifully on the streets across the valley and at the Mughal garden. The unique leaves turn red before falling on ground, giving a kaleidoscopic look to the valley. A tourist said she enjoyed the breathtaking scenic beauty. बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है हमने ऐसा कहीं नहीं देखा मैं तो स्विट्जरलैंड भी जाकर आई लेकिन ऐसा मेरे को कहीं नहीं मिला बहुत अच्छा नेचुरल ब्यूटी है यहाँ The autumn season is also known as Harud in the local language denotes the foggy season with different hues in the air During autumn season the leaves of majestic chinar trees turn gold brown from the green which is always attracting nature lovers मुगल गार्डन्स में हमारी कंसंट्रेशन चिनार्स की बहुत ज़्यादा है उस वजह से ये आटम की मतलब एक मुनफरिद अट्रैक्शन बन जाता है मुगल गार्डन्स निषाद शालिमार हमारे अगर निषाद की बात करें उसमें कोई सवा दो सौ चिनार्स हमारे पास हैं और वो एक प्रॉपर पैटर्न में लगे हुए हैं तो एक जिसको बोलते हैं ऑटम का जो ह्यू होता है वो जो एक मॉस इफेक्ट होता है वो अट्रैक्ट करता है नेशनल टूरिस्ट को लोकल टूरिस्ट को इंटरनेशनल टूरिस्ट को Jammu and Kashmir is a well-known tourist destination for winter activities, making tourism one of the main stays of the region's economy. The tourism industry is trying to recover from the woes of coronavirus pandemic that struck the country last year. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian farmers hold mass rally, keep pressure on PM Modi despite climb down. International Monetary Fund to revive $6 billion Pakistan funding program. And Sri Lanka begins trials connected to 2019 Easter bombings case. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's on Internet's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.